having a dreamsicle flavored cone. Hello world, I'm Maya Ryan and I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. Uh, so far I've been able to share my own experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum. The second thing that I will do is give my two cents on autism in the media. The third area entails providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum as well as your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers, and finally I will cover topics of things that I'm passionate about in addition to doing day in the life type blogging. So please check me out. here picking up some matzah before it's too late. Uh, the last couple years I've been shopping later. Like, actually, two years ago I ordered my matzah on Amazon.com and it came like that. I almost got this sparkling Martinelli's grape juice in these small bottles, like four or five at Dollar General, for a dollar a piece, so it would have been four dollars between these little glass bottles. But I think this is better because I've gotten more for my money, and I'm happy that I've got that Moscato, and I'm glad to know that it's not citrus, even though it does have a citrusy taste to it, which I, again, prefer to or refer to as Big Girl Sprite. Actually, I just took a look. Oh, look, it just said that this is an Italian sparkling wine and it has grapes in it. So, uh, I guess this is acceptable for the uh, four cups of wine or four glasses of wine for Passover. Finally just got in, we had another passenger and we drove all the way from Toku Hills to Dunwoody so it took longer, which is something I did not expect. I should have just flown solo. I just got home and I have to put away my groceries and then crack open my bottle of kombucha that I got from uh, the grocery store earlier tonight. But I cannot drink kombucha at all next week, not until next Saturday night, because that has yeast in it, and yeast is considered leaven. But what I can have to improvise is uh, sparkling water and unsweetened iced tea which I think will be okay. I drink kombucha all the time, just all the time. But anyway, as soon as I put everything away and I crack open that bucha, what I'm going to do is talk to you about something really important because we've had a really crazy week and I think this needs to be said. Screw that, never try to open a bottle of kombucha while you're holding a phone recording. But anyway, I've cracked open the kombucha. <sighs> nice and fresh. I finally settled in and I've got my kombucha. So I'm not going anywhere for a while. What I'd like to do now is get down to business by covering a topic that I'm passionate about as well as letting you guys know my stance on this. So 
As you guys know, on April 15th, 2019, there was a great tragedy that took place. And first of all, my heart goes out to all of the Catholics and to all of the deacons and the nuns and all of the people that work there, in addition to the tourists and people that have been there and to the people that uh, have read Victor Hugo's book and watched the movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame which is personally one of my favorite films. I love that movie in the 90s and had a great obsession with that, and I will get to that in a minute. But anyway, I wanted to let you guys know that on the 15th of April, the world-famous cathedral, Notre Dame, and not to be confused with Notre Dame, which is a Catholic college in... Uh, Indiana that belongs to the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame is a famous cathedral in Paris and it was built in the 1100s and it is over 800 years old. This fire was so tense and so destructive that it caused the roof over the forest to fall down and it caused the spire in which there are captured uh, moments in Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame where Quasimodo climbed up and was holding on to that spire when he was singing out there. And the fact that I love that movie and to watch that happening live on YouTube was just disturbing. And as somebody who's on the spectrum, it took me a long time for the emotions to actually set in in fact, it took watching clips from Hunchback of Notre Dame because that's the only way I had connections. I've never been to Paris or France. In fact, I've never been to Europe, period, because it costs a pretty penny to go over there. And I just have never had the chance. But it took watching the scenes when Quasimodo was singing out there and he was climbing up to the top of the spire and it helped me to remember that, that I actually felt something. And I just, again, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm sorry that you lost Notre Dame because that's a beautiful cathedral. And a lot of people are saying that this uh, was caused by construction work. There is no question about terrorism. It's believed that this was an accident, and it's a blessing that there are things inside that building that are still intact, that are still standing, including the beautiful sanctuary. I mean, the little red lights that have the oil candles in them, they were still lit based on pictures that I saw on Facebook. But it's the forest section when you first walk into the foyer which I guess had wooden buttresses. And people believe that these wooden buttresses caused the fire to kindle. I, for one, am wondering what the cause was. And I don't know for sure because I wasn't there. I don't know how it started. But one theory that comes to mind is perhaps the construction workers had some sort of chemical that uh, they were using for the construction and perhaps someone forgot to put these chemicals away that were uh, flammable and maybe it it was left out into the sun and it got too hot and it somehow exploded and it became so massive and so intense that it just started burning and didn't stop in addition to other combustibles like the wood and buttresses but either way, this is tragic. Again, it's taking a while for me to get this to sink in. And again, uh, it took watching clips of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, a movie that I was obsessed with when I was 14 years old, being that I was obsessed with Disney films to begin with, to really feel the emotions. In fact, I decided that it was... Uh, so intense and so touching and attaching 
that I elected to go onto Google Play yesterday and buy the movie, which, by the way, is only $10 on Google Play. I don't know what it costs on Fire TV, but I have a feeling that The Hunchback of Notre Dame in the Disney form will now be getting the recognition that it finally deserves because back in the day they ignored that movie which broke my heart because it's a wonderful film and Quasimodo to be quite frank despite his uh, birth defects is an adorable character and he sets good examples for kids and for adults and teens alike and the animation and the art in that is just really, really, really spectacular. So I'm happy to see that and happy, and I can't wait to hear that people are watching The Hunchback of Notre Dame, that people are walking out in the streets singing Out There, or they're singing Topsy Turvy, which reminds me of Lumiere's version of Be Our Guest. So do yourself a favor, if you haven't been to France, and haven't been to Notre Dame, go watch The Hunchback of Notre Dame because it is a movie that is not really for kids. It's more for teenagers and adults alike. It has a lot of themes on disability rights and equal rights and how people with disabilities are locked away and they're oppressed, as well as other forms of social justice. And there's some really, really, really dark themes in that. But the only thing I have to uh, discredit it for are two of the gargoyles. Now, as a kid, I used to think they were funny. When I mean kid, I was 14, 15, 16. I thought that Hugo, who is voiced by Jason Alexander on Seinfeld, that that was popular at the same time. I can't stand him now. And I honestly can't stand his other character, not his character, but... The other gargoyle, I can't stand Victor and Hugo. I think they're annoying, and I think that whoever directed this could have done without those gargoyles. Rather, they should have had Quasimodo connecting with other people in the church, like the deacons and the monks. And just people trying to be positive to him when Judge Claude Frollo is away. Instead, they have him talking to these little imaginary friends. I mean, yes, that's cute, but... I think the movie um, would have stood on its own very well because there were too many other memorable characters. Although I love the character Laverne, which is the third gargoyle and she's a female. I like her because uh, she was in Sister Act and she was also in uh, Hazel and she was also in The Trouble with Angels. And so she did that movie right before she died. So. I just enjoyed her character, and then she has a very interesting voice. Has almost a masculine sound to it, not like a deep masculine, but it sounds more male than female. But Laverne is a girl, and I think she's the best character of them all, or in Gargoyles. But I think I prefer Quasimodo because he was my favorite. In fact, I had a t-shirt with Quasimodo um, holding onto the spire, my aunt and uncle bought me that shirt because they knew I liked Quasi and I talked about him all the time. And so it was quite uh, capt uh, it was quite captivating to open a box when I was 15 years old and see the Quasimodo shirt and him holding on to the spire. And so what I'm trying to do in honor of the fallen spire and of those childhood memories of me in my teens is try to recreate or try to retrieve the same t-shirt because it means something. I mean, I loved that shirt back then. And I love it now. So. One thing I've got to mention, I love matzo ball soup, but I'm not the biggest fan of the Manischewitz brand because it tastes just like Play-Doh. I should know. I used to eat Plato as a kid. <laughs>